Hello everyone, so I thought I would go back to doing the Ubuntu release videos. So this is Lubuntu 20.04, which is an official derivative supported by Canonical. It uses the LXQ desktop, uh, which is supposed to be lighter weight. Now the direction of Lubuntu has changed from what it was traditionally. So it used to be the older LXDE desktop and was aimed at supporting older computers. But they point out now that uh, old systems, say 10 years old, it would be like the AMD Phenom systems. Now I had one of those and it was a hex core system, so six cores and it had uh, 16 gig of RAM. So what would they look at supporting? Now I know that system was a bit of an exception really, that had a lot of memory, but uh, even something 10 years old would, uh, would have had more than a gig of memory. So the direction now is to focus on a more modular system, albeit uh, lighter weight. So we have 388 meg of RAM in use. Uh, one thing they don't say now is what the minimum system requirements are. Going with that figure, I would say about a gig. The LXQ desktop is based on Qt, or Qt as it's pronounced, which is a bit more unusual really. There's not many Linux desktops that actually use the Qt toolkit. There is a Plasma desktop, KDE Plasma. There's Lumina and LXQ. And uh, yeah, that, that's about all I can think of really. So this was the blog where they said about changing direction. So, yeah, that, that's fair really. I mean, it's going to be difficult to support older systems now with Canonical dropping 32-bit support. Although they're continuing to support 32-bit libraries and Steam. This version of Lubuntu is using the Linux 5.4 kernel. And there's better security protections in this kernel. Although I've said about that so many times in my other Ubuntu reviews, I'm sure you're getting a bit bored of it. There's one thing I will mention is there's no direct upgrade from Lubuntu 18.04 because that used LXDE. I suppose it could be done, but they advise against it. So yeah, <laughs> the advice is to do a new install. But I believe it's possible to upgrade from the older 19.10 release as that also used LXQ. So there's not too much of a difference of dependencies and pre-installed applications. And talking about pre-installed applications, well, most of them are Qt based. We do have some of the KDE applications, KCalc, although we do have some lighter weight equivalents. Now, I disregard some of the applications I've got on here, so I will mention uh, some of the things I've installed later on in the video, but uh, yeah, one of the lighter weight applications here is PC Man FM. File Manager, it's uh, fairly feature rich. Got tab browsing. It doesn't have the terminal integration that Dolphin has, but pressing F4 does open terminal into the folder that you're currently in. So if I go across to documents, then yeah, pressing F4 opens up a terminal to the documents folder. You can have unique settings to each folder. So on that folder, I've gone for a detailed view and the other folders I'm still using the default uh, icon view. And displays a thumbnail view by default. We can see they've certainly shied away from being a release for older distributions uh, by including LibreOffice instead of the lighter weight equivalents. Looking at rendering of a variety of application types, so we have a gedit here. <laughs> not, not so sure that looks uh, perfect, but um, then again, do uh, the GNOME applications really look perfect with that uh, bloated window title bar with the menus in it? Not in my opinion, but uh, <laughs> my opinion, of course. I've installed a couple of Snap-based applications. So I've got GIMP when it opens. Uh, we've got uh, Inkscape when it opens. Yeah, GIMP goes for a darker background. <laughs> Good one. Um, yeah, that, that, that's how it looks anyway. Uh, Inkscape, so that uh, has taken the system theming. Not, not sure what that uh, orange line is there, but um, otherwise that looks uh, reasonable. We've got uh, Kadian Live. Kadian Live, I installed that for a snap. Although I could install it natively. But why not mess around with a different uh, application type? So yeah, let's see how those look. Uh, yeah, th that looks fine. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that at all. Uh, Chromium. Yeah, Chromium web browser. We we're forced to install Chromium as a snap now in Ubuntu, thanks to the adept to snap transition. Again, this looks fine. So I'd have to say, in comparison to the KDE Plasma desktop, there's really no difference. They're rendering the applications 
I suppose, other than this slight difference on Inkscape, that they're rendering pretty much uh, equally. You've got a consistent styling here, you've got the same mouse cursor throughout the snap and non-snap applications. So yeah, if you can use it and not notice a glaring difference, then it's good. Although thinking about it a bit further, perhaps the Plasma desktop does do a slightly better job on the GTK applications. But now for some of the annoyances that I've noticed. So looking across at say PC Man FM, and let's say I want to go across to an SSH server. So let's just go to SSH, uh, which one should I take? Um, Molina.tzd, my DNS server, and we get, yeah, okay. Can't verify the identity, this happens when you log in to a computer for the first time. Yeah, that, that's absolutely fine. We would expect this for SSHing to a computer for the first time. So you go for login anyway, and it says login dialog cancelled. Great, thanks. <laughs> the specific location is not mounted. I know, but I'm trying to mount it. So if you let me connect to it, um, I would appreciate it. Uh, and it's the same story if you go via the connect to remote server. So if you go this way, yep, same again. But if I connect to a system that I've already connected to uh, via SSH and yeah, I've accepted that uh, warning, it, it works fine. And I can connect to the server. Yeah, that, there's something not quite right there with PC Man FM. It, it should allow me to continue. And for another annoyance, well, there is a searcher provided in the application menu, and I think, great, um, seems nice to use. I can open up terminal, um, select an entire word, delete it. Uh, but say if I want to install a new application, well, I want some software, don't I? All I've got is software sources. Okay, what, what about applications? No, it, it's not there. So if I'm doing a vague search on the subject of the application I'm after, it, it doesn't pick anything up. I was thinking, well, maybe they didn't include anything until I tried doing sudo apt install moon, and uh, lo and behold, it was installed by default. <laughs> it's like, great. Uh, okay, um, so, so what about something fancier? I mean, I could have installed discover, couldn't I? Oh, oh no, wait, I didn't need to. It's already installed on the system by default. Like, great, you know, the applications are there, but I couldn't find them via a subject search. I had to search for the name specifically. And the, I think the only reason terminal worked there is because it's called Q terminal and it's picking up that part of the word. As I mentioned earlier, there is a push from Canonical to utilize snap based applications over the dev packages. That really applies more for Ubuntu itself. Uh, Kubuntu and Lubuntu here, both are using the Qt desktop. They favor dev packages first. So let's say if I search for VLC, an application that is already installed by default. So the first result here is for the dev package. Oh, it's not obvious that it is, but uh, if I scroll down here and go for the one that's further down the list, we can see that it is a snap based application there. That's been a similar story all around. Uh, unless you're looking for something that's only a snap based application, then yeah, that, that's all that you'll find. So the Raspberry Pi Imager, for example, that is a snap and there is no dev package for it. I've been happy enough using Discover. It's interesting they didn't utilize Discover for the updates. Instead, we've got, uh, I can't even find it now. Oh yeah, apply full upgrade. Here we are. Uh, yeah, so I can go for this route and I get the uh, sudo dialog box here, which honestly just looks awful, doesn't it? <laughs> or do I get attempt number two? Does it count up? Yes, it does. Yeah. So their upgrader is um, somewhat basic. But I suppose if you're going for lighter weight, then you're going to have basic with lightweight. I'm looking a bit at customization, so the configuration of moving a panel, so that, that, that seems fairly straightforward. I can move these panels around to different parts of the desktop. I'll obviously, I have to change the uh, sizing there to make it look a bit nicer. Yeah, it doesn't look great though. I, I would prefer an iconified view at this point, something which uh, Plasma Desktop does automatically. Uh, we can look at further configurations or preferences. In the LXQ settings, we've got a variety of items here. But I'll go for the LXQ configuration center. So all 
think all those items are listed here as well. Looks pretty similar anyway. Looking at the window effects, so it's changing the effects you can use on the Compton renderer. The appearance. Appearance, so a bit more of a basic view than you would get in Plasma. Yeah, very much a basic view and there's no easy way of downloading new items. I'm comparing it to Plasma quite a bit, but uh, yeah, it's probably like the, the closest comparison really. I might as well look at a couple of different Cute desktops rather than go across to GNOME desktops. So yeah, there's options here for customization. As I said, it's not quite as plentiful as the Plasma desktop itself. There's a screensaver. That's a nice little throwback there. I don't like this full level of detail that you get for some applications. Why do I need to know the version number and date that it was released? That's not important to me. I, I just want this as screensaver preferences. <laughs> don't need to be anything else. Keep it simple. So overall, I have to say that Lubuntu has worked perfectly well here. I've not seen a single sign of a crash. All the applications have uh, opened up. Although I did have an issue installing the Snap version of Audacity due to a missing theme on there. I did try and install the GTK2 theme it required, but didn't exist, so I had to pass on that. What I was disappointed with, though, was the performance of opening applications. I don't think it's quite as snappy as it should be. It just feels very sluggish on the application opening, and I feel like I'm having to wait a few seconds longer than I really should. Once the applications have opened though, they seem to be perfectly fine and responsive. It's just that initial opening, and it doesn't seem any different whether I'm using a dev package or a snap package. In fact, they seem about equal on opening speed. It's nice to be able to install the native versions of the KDE applications, but uh, in the end I can't help but think I, I would rather be using the Plasma desktop. It just uh, seems more responsive, the searcher is better, the searcher even looks at documents, not just programs. And the searcher in the Plasma desktop does find applications by subjects, because when I typed in software, it did list Discover in the results. Missed out Moon, but Discover was there, which was uh, the important one, really. A software installer. So that was a look at Lubuntu 2004. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all later.